And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Aurelian Soul Leona. This is going to be our first try with the new Targon landmark, Targon's Peak. We're playing um, all of the new landmarks today, well at least four of the, of the five new landmarks today in different decks. This one's going to be a Leona Aurelian Soul deck with all of the Daybreak stuff with Leona and a good amount of dragons also. Um, and invoke and everything like that. All right, so basically, Targon's Peak, five mana landmark, round start, reduce the cost of a random card in each player's hand to zero this round. Now, what I've seen with Targon's Peak so far with playing games is I've, I've only seen this with Freljord and people playing it with um, Aurelian Soul and Trindamir and Trundle and Feel the Rush and a bunch of like eight, nine, and 10 mana cards and just trying to be all ramp in Targon's Peak and then play really expensive stuff. I'm not a big fan of that kind of deck, to be honest. And I'm not really, like, I don't, I don't know if that kind of deck, I don't know, I haven't been very impressed with that kind of deck so far. I guess that's what I'm saying. Um, we, we've we beaten that kind of deck every time we've played against it yesterday. But the the reason why is because you're, you're really relying on a lot of stuff to go right in that kind of deck you know like you're relying on being able to ramp pretty fast but then you know or get to like the targon's peak <clears throat> spend five men on this hope your opponent hasn't like played a bunch of stuff to be able to kill you and um you know so you have to like have your targon's peak you have your opponent have your opponent not kill you and then also you have to get lucky of having like your targon's peak make something that costs you know like something that allows you to catch up cost zero um because you know you're really far behind with that kind of deck and uh, you know, and and also not give something that your opponents has that that allows them to kill you cost zero. You know, like you have to have so much stuff go right for you in that kind of deck. I I feel like, um, but it's it's obviously super super powerful whenever things do go right. What we're gonna do here though is we're gonna play a more mid rangey deck, a, a more defensive oriented deck that still has the Targon's Peak. And I I like this kind of deck more. So basically, we're gonna be able to have um, more of a real game whenever we don't have our Targon's Peak. And we're going to have a lot of tools against um, aggro and mid-range and just a lot of ways to slow the game down. Like the Daybreak cards and Leona play defense incredibly well. You have Solari Sunforger that plays defense incredibly well. You have good removal with single combat, concerted strike, very good defensive tools. Um, but you, then you still have like this top end. So basically what, what we're trying to do, our goal of our deck is to make the game go as long as possible, to stretch out the game very long. Um, because Targon's Peak, um, while uh, basically over time, we're just going to get a lot of value from Targon's Peak. While any particular like one turn, maybe we make a Solari Shield Bearer cost zero mana, and you're like, okay, well, that's not really that good. We're making this Shield Bearer cost zero mana, or the Soldier cost zero mana. But, um, and you know, so like that can happen for any one turn, but we're looking at over the long haul, um, you know, being able to have tons of card advantage because that's what this deck also has this deck has tons of card advantage we have a lot of things that generate cards whether it's you know like your egghead researcher makes another dragon for us or solari priestess you know does the invoke star shaping does the invoke with expensive cards eclipse dragon gives us more expensive cards of course aurelian soul obviously aurelian soul being the biggest one so hopefully like after over a whole bunch of turns we can still use a lot of mana so we're still going to be able to um you know, we'll have some things cost zero with Targon's Peak, which is good, but then we're still going to have other cards to be, be able to cast and use our 10 mana every single turn, where hopefully our opponent just kind of runs out of cards where we're not going to. Um, because if, if you don't have enough cards, then Targon's Peak isn't, you know, like if you just have like, you know, like one card that you make cost zero, then you just can't spend the rest of your mana. And that's like the goal of our deck, be able to spend all of our mana every turn and also play something uh, for zero with Targon's Peak, and just be able to do that turn after turn after turn and have a lot of defensive things that keeps our opponent from killing us, and then eventually we just kind of grind them down and take over. Plus, we have just like the really high explosive plays of making your Rillian Soul cost zero or Skies Descend cost zero, because any time that if we ever get to, you know, kind of roll the dice and get a zero mana Skies Descend, that's going to be like ending the game on the spot for the most part. So, uh, so yeah, so that's that's what our, our deck's all about. So we should be better against like your normal like mid range and aggro decks than than the all out ramp deck. Um, you know, we're not going to have the highest upside as like we're not going to have as high of an upside as they do, even though we can, um, you know, peak at 
zero mana Skies Descend. But we should have just like a good mid rangey game whenever we're not doing that and be able to win games that way also. Um, now we're probably going to be bad in the Targon's Peak Mirror, so that's what I want to face the least. Because the other Targon's Peak decks, you know, they do have more of a top end and they are, you know, they, they have such higher variance that they're like that high variance is probably going to be really powerful and that may um, win games against us. So that's that's what I want to face the least is the other Targon Peaks decks. But I think that we're just in general against like the whole rest of the metagame that we should be better. Um, that's that's my plan. So that's what we're going with here. Um, Aurelian Sol Leona. All right, let's go play five games. So if you made Skies Ascend cost zero, would Nopify counter it? I believe so because it it would cost zero. So I yes, I I think so. Yeah, I think it would. All right, see, so we're, like we're playing against the burn deck. I think I'm just going to mulligan all of those cards against the burn deck, um, even the Targon's Peak. We'll have to, we'll have to see. You know, like once I get like some more practice in with the deck, you know, maybe maybe we'd keep the Targon's Peak. And uh, you know, in that instance. Yeah, like maybe I should keep Targon Speak. I'm not sure. Obviously, for how we've drawn, <laughs> I wish I still had it. Right, we have not drawn. Uh, we've not drawn ideally. Alright, let's get the thing with Lifesteal. Really, what I wanted to find is the five, you know, we have the four mana, five, four lifesteal. That's that's the card that I want to find. That's like why I mulliganed a good amount of stuff. I wanted to look for that card. For him. Behind you. Not the egg. Yeah, I'm sorry, Nashor. I forgot to do that. Proud warriors of the sun's true light. Really wish next turn was turn six. Man, we didn't did not draw that five four life steal, and we did not draw very well. Drew two Aurelian Souls, two Eclipse Dragons, a Skies Descend. I guess we didn't draw two Eclipse Dragons, we created one. Um, this was not good for us. <laughs> so much for having like all these mid-range cards whenever you don't draw them. Flesh was weak, but look at me so cards that cost more than five mana in our deck, we have three Aurelian Soul, three Eclipse Dragon, two Skies Descend. That's it. We have eight total cards that cost more than five mana in our deck. <laughs> And we drew four of the eight and created another. Coming in hot! The light of my star warms the heavens. We're definitely gonna have to have the Golden Sister fight. So it looks like I could fight the I could fight the two three to keep my golden sister alive for a little bit. How bothersome. No mercy for heretics. No further. Man, this is me taking five. I guess I would mean, I wouldn't take this too. But if I or if I do this, fight here. We take less damage, but then my golden sister dies. No further. Let's do this. Well, 
Well, good news is they're basically out of cards. Can you improve perfection? Bad news is so am I. <laughs> the last card was another get excited. All right, well, great hand. Okay, another aggro deck. Cool. Obviously, really, in Soul is gone. It's just, do I want to mulligan Star Shaping? I think we will keep Star Shaping as we saw how that last game played out. And who knows? Like, I did, I did nothing on turn five. That last game against the Burn deck. Maybe if I would have had the Targon speak, who knows? Maybe the Targon speak would have been the Sky's Descent. Push back to darkness. My faith protects me. I'll keep that from attacking. That's a good draw. Have one of these things fight the Lucian. Come, come this way. And I, I guess I have like the, the three two that's going to die anyway. Fight the Lucian. I think that makes more sense than the three six. So if I have the three six fight, then uh, this turns into a three one afterwards. That three two is gonna die anyway. All right, we're gonna try to take the turn off for Targon's Peak. And hoping we hit Skies Descend. The Grand Plaza. There's a chill in the air. Guys, this end? Not quite. Star shaping's not bad, though. Star shaping's not bad. The power of the immortal sun. Get him, Leona. The sun's splendor revealed. I guess I should just grab the 10-mana thing. So the reason why I don't want to play Shield Bearer is because, so Leona's at 3 out of 4, I play Robin, that's 4 out of 4, and then I go Shield Bearer, you know, and we get, like, the two day breaks. But I guess maybe the reason to play... I guess I should be casting it, you know, like, we'll see if they do something, then I guess I'll probably cast it. I guess the reason to cast it is because then it makes it, like, 50-50 shot for, like, Scourge and Sky's Ascend to cost zero. So I guess, it, I guess it's worth it. Okay. Got zero mana skies to send, because that's really fair. In a long path to get that seems pretty fair. Yep, that looks fair. They still have something cost zero. Both both turns, they haven't used whatever cost zero. Alright, that'll do. 
was gonna, you know, play that, then play Eclipse Dragon. Soul Invictus. Riven Lee Sin. Okay, Lee Sin, that, Lee Sin could definitely be a problem. Not really scared of Riven, not Riven, sorry, not really scared of Riven or really anything else in their deck. Uh, definitely scared of Lee Sin. So, if I have my way, Lee Sin will be at the bottom of the deck. If I could just choose. So I don't know if there's anything else with like Riven, Noxus. I guess Riven can get really big Overwhelm also. I guess that's a thing. Yeah, have a bunch of Eye of the Dragons. And a bunch of Draglings. Yeah, that's, that's good. Get a bunch of Draglings. Draglings are powerful. Those are definitely going to defeat me. I was born in battle and raised by war. All right, so I like the concerted strike to go along with single combat. So we have a couple of removal spells towards Elisen. The dawn has arrived. Carry her light across the mountain. Just gonna go ahead and stun Riven right now. The glorious light rains down. I think they just That must be the only unit in hand, because I think they just barrier yeah, they just barrier the same thing. They they just use the barrier on the exact same thing. No. Hey, the the only card that can defeat me. Alright, well that was just perfect. Right? Zero mana, Aurelian Soul, and then I have nine mana for Concerted Strike, single combat, single combat. So I can play all of those this turn. So that's kind of perfect. Yeah, the scourge. The heavens diminish without my attention. Oh my! I fight with my spirit. Our enemies not would be foolish fist. to underestimate. Man, this Targon speed card seems pretty fair. Leading with that because if they use, you know, if they use deny, if they use the counter, I'd rather have concerted strike afterwards. All right, I'll just hold on to the rest of the cards in our hand. Cost thirteen. Sunlight guide you, my brethren. The mountain knows me. I am the traveler. Alright, what am I making cost less? Next round, I'm gonna have eight mana, so it's not, I'm not gonna have nine for these things. A good scene on I don't really need the life steal anyway. I'm just gonna get that out of my hand, so it's you know not a target for the Targon's Peak. And of course, I'm casting this Moon Silver, also, so it's not a target. I guess I'm gonna go with the. I don't know the really Soul, I guess. To 
them on dragon wings, I won't look back. Alright, so we'll have Eclipse Dragon, make some more dragons. Quick attack, overwhelm, and is an 8 5. Back later. I know if this resolves, this is like my 5 4 actually striking first, so I don't get the fury bonus. I guess I should have done it the other way, but, um, but I, I definitely should have kept uh, Targon's peak. Beowulf. So Victor, Diana. Let's try a new hand. I want, um, you know, I like this more. I like like these Daybreak cards. There we go. Find Targon's Peak. Bless the people and see the I think that first game, I think I should have kept the Targon's Peak. Even against the burn deck. They forced us to choose death or the blade. But it was a good lesson learned, you know, it was our first game playing with the deck. Their sense travels on the night air. Invisible to the people. I was thinking Diana. I thought that's what they're gonna do. I I guess I'd rather them have this elusive than Diana killing my soldier for free. So we don't have the attack token on turn four. So Sunforger on turn four will just have the life steal for that one round. They'll be blocking. I'd like to draw single combat. And lights the way. All right, meteor shower can get rid of Victor. Sure. Whatever the cost. Okay. I wanted to see if they would lead with if they would Victor. I wanted to have the six mana for the fallen comet. Sunlight guide you, my brethren. Clad in shining sunlight. I'm something of an aspiring ecologist. <laughs> Catrogen. That'll be a cool card for the peak. We'll see if they found a fallen comet to take out my peak. Doesn't look like it. All right, this is going to start. This is going to cost zero right here. All right, well, I guess Catrogen cost zero. Not bad. We can we can live with that. You trespass on sacred lands, unbeliever. You know not the meaning of sacred. Hmm. Oh, it's a great sight to behold. I want to keep the ability for Falling Comet alive still. Should I Falling Comet this 3-4 elusive? They're not playing Victor. Maybe I need to. Yeah, I think landmark removal is really important these days. Um, Aftershock is the new PNZ card that has landmark removal. I think that card is really good. Um, I think that Aftershock should kind of be in every PNZ deck. 
Raven. Warriors of the Raharat, our time is now. We'll follow you to the edge of daybreak. Run, Amarithi. Yeah, our deck is very, very defensive, for sure. Oh yeah, that's a pretty sparkle play. Piercing rays! Scorching light! Oh, you're interested. See, so, yeah, like they they wanted to have like these blockers. Anyway, because like they they should be playing Victor. You know, either Victor or Diana, they have one of those two, and both of those are going to be very good champions. But I need to clear a space. Find your path in the dark. They had Diana, and they're playing Diana right now. What's the upside of playing Diana right now? Instead of on their attack turn. I guess because it's leveled up, all they have to do is play any other Nightfall card. No. no. What if we just play another Targon's Peak? So yeah, I could so I could play, you know, like the Eclipse Dragon that Robin created, and then we get, you know, we get our two Nightfall cards. And it all, we also get the Daybreak ability. We get them both. I'm gonna play another Targon's Peak. Just try to make it more likely that Scott, you know, now it's like 50-50 shot for Sky's Descend, right? Well, I guess it's technically it's 0.25 times 0.33 repeating. But not really 50 50. No, no, no. It's 9 damage. That almost kills me. Still 9 damage. That stun card didn't really do anything. Yeah, that, that wasn't a good use of that stun card. They should have saved that. I guess. That kept their Diana alive, I guess. But it was the same amount of damage. You know, they would have just challenged the elusive. Alright, Skies Ascend cost zero. Hmm. We did not have Skies Ascend cost zero. But it costs 11. I guess I have 11 mana. I can just cast it. Yeah, I suppose I can just cast it. Our sun will not set today. Let's see if they put like another thing out here. You know, another thing for us to kill Skies Ascend. The strength of the sun and my faith are one. Moonlight guide me. But they they could have dealt that nine damage either way. Like the Crescent Strike didn't do anything. Why would you not get Subpersible? I guess because I have this big elusive anyway. Doesn't really matter. Okay, there we go. Targon's Peak. Targon's Peak's pretty good, but uh, we, we're still hard casting Skies Descends over here. <laughs> no, Rivenly Sin again. All right, well, last time we, we were really lucky of having two Concerted Strikes and a or sorry, two single combats and a concerted strike for 
the Lee Sin. Let's mulligan you. And you. And you. Yeah. Don't really need any of those cards. Like, those three cards and these three cards are, like, the same thing, right? Like, they're just all interchangeable. The cards I was looking for for this matchup would be Single Combat, Concerted Strike, Targon's Peak. I want those three cards. Basically, everything else doesn't, you know, can interchange with other other things, and so we can mulligan everything else. Alright, two single combats. That's definitely very good. Break the ties that bind. And I guess Solari Priestess going and finding Falling Comet also good, because that's also another way that we can deal with Lee Sin. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Prediction fail. I don't have any really great ideas for the Ionia landmark yet. I haven't really sat down and, and thought about it Water changes um, too much, to be honest. Alright, I like our hand. Now basically it's all about finding Targon's Peak and our top end. We got our removal. So I like that. Now we need to find Targon's Peak and the top end. Alright, three out of four. Unyielding light! I want to play one of the Daybreak cards to level up Leona. I decided not to play the 4-mana one, because we're we're already at 20. Our Nexus is at 20, so the lifesteal for this turn doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to go with this so that if they do have a Lee Sin, I can still have a couple of answers for Lee Sin. But I guess our answers aren't that great. Okay, that's cool. I'll take that. Yay, peak. Extend your senses. Boo, the Lee Sin. I guess it's important to play this card just to have something with like single combat that, that actually kills Lee Sin. So the Daybreak Lifesteal, we haven't really done too much with it. I, I really like it, but we haven't really done too much with it yet. Our one loss was against a burn deck. We didn't draw it, of course, in that matchup. Would have been fantastic if we would have drawn it. Like, Cabo said that, that he's been really impressed with the 5-4 lifesteal. Sorry about that. Okay, let's see what we got. Alright, so Leona's gonna die. Yeah, it looks like Leona's gonna die. Like, I, I could keep Leona alive, then I don't get to kill Lee Sin. Because I could play Concerted Strike right now and kill Lee Sin. And that's probably more Starting important than keeping alive. Leona alive. So either, either, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. So we're going to strike, you, you strike, then you strike. There we go. Okay. Good. Guys, descend. All right, pass turn. Go. Beauty charms while claws take hold. All right, we'll just go ahead and kill Riven so they don't get to keep uh, getting the, you know, the blades every single time they gain the attack token. <laughs> Zero mana, single combat. To serve the greater good. Really saving our mana here. Daylight, everlasting. Solari control all that her want touches. I would be pretty surprised if they do not have Deny. Kind of expect Deny. 
from them as far as like zero mana skies to send. You're in over your head. Suffer! You are my prey! No escape! Well, I hope they don't have Nopify. Nopify should counter, like, the zero mana cards also, though. Gonna go ahead and just play this Lari Soldier to get it out of my hand. Alright, so we need our top end. So where is Aurelian Soul, Eclipse Dragon? Yeah, that kind of stuff. I mean, even Solari Priestess would be good. We need even our, our two mana 1 3 that creates dragons. We need cards that create other cards right now. Which is a lot of our deck. Alright, so the Guardian. I can't go Guardian and Fallen Comet. The spirit gives to those who I was a mana short from Guardian and Falling Comet. Currents pull them down. What form will the waters take? Thrust River shape the land and give it life. Really hoping that they, you know, like they play something real good for me to fall in comet. I fall in comet, they deny it, then then I go after they deny. Um, then I would play the skies descend. Unyielding light. Its power courses through me. Strike firm. Enter your spirit. Heads will roll. Try to run. They have four cards in hand. That one's a piece of the blade. Got the deny out of their hand. And we'll just make sure this costs zero. Breathe in, breathe out. And hope it works. And multiple denies. Not too much to do about that. Well, ended up losing. The tools of Lee Sin can still get it done. They have, you know, enough nopifies and denies, um, and leeson. You know, they have all that kind of stuff. I didn't have like a, you know, I didn't have a really in soul to help me out. But you know, like they had, they had all that kind of stuff, and you know that that deck can definitely win if you have leeson with enough denies. All right, but there we go, Aurelian Soul Leona. So we only ended up going three and two, but I think our deck felt really strong. I think both of our losses were kind of. You know, corner case scenarios. We lost to like the really aggressive deck, 
with us having a bad hand and we lost to Lee Sin whenever, you know, if you have Lee Sin with all the with all that kind of protection, um, you know, that Lee Sin can definitely win like that. Um, so, you know, like you're, you're never going to win 100% of your games with anything, but I think that, I think I really liked the consistency of our deck um, as I talked about just at the beginning compared to the other Targon's Peaks decks. Um, I really liked this one. And um, I didn't, you know, we didn't get to do a whole lot with the Solaris on Forger, unfortunately. Um, I couldn't really mulligan more than I did that game, I guess. I, I guess I did mulligan, like, everything ex except for a single combat. So I don't think I could have really mulliganed more with that one. I wouldn't mind seeing, like, another star shaping in here. But it was just kind of hard to find room for another star shaping with, like, needing, like, these other cards. Um, but another star shaping could kind of be nice. Um, but yeah, there we go. That's a really insult Leona, though. Um, yeah, I think this was a really good Targon Speak deck. All right, anyway, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and of course, leave those comments. I uh, would always love seeing those. Let me know, what do you want to see coming up for, like, with this brand new expansion? What kind of decks do you want to see? Um, you know, anything like that. What else do you, you have? Like, if you have any other ideas for Targon Speak or anything, I'd um, love to see it. All right, but that's it here for Aurelian Soul Leona. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.